We're going to examine the inclined plane. It's not a problem that's particularly emphasized by the IB, but I think most physics teachers find it a really fundamental example. First thing, when we have a object on an inclined plane, let's suppose it's frictionless, then the only two forces acting would of course be the normal force and the weight mg. The weight would of course act straight down. Now in most systems, what we do is to resolve into components we choose the vertical and horizontal directions. But in this particular case, the interesting motion is, of course, straight down the ramp. So what we're going to do is we're going to resolve our components into a component down the ramp and another component that's, of course, perpendicular to the ramp along the direction of the normal. So that normal vector, this one here, we don't have to resolve it into components because it's already normal to the ramp. And it's the weight, the mg, the one that's straight down, that we need to resolve into components. Now, when we start doing that and we draw our components here and here, then of course we're expecting that the angle in this right angle triangle that's formed is going to be related to the angle of the ramp here, theta. And you can see that th as this angle theta grows, this angle in the triangle grows as well and of course they're growing together. So this angle here is going to have to be theta up here. Now be a little bit careful with that because if I had drawn my components on the other side, that is if, I've, if I'd added this parallel component first, so if I drew that one on first and then came down, then of course my angle would be down here at the bottom. That angle would be growing with this angle theta. So key features that I want you to get out of this is that it's the weight that we're going to break up into components. We're going to choose components perpendicular to the ramp and along the ramp and that this angle of the ramp theta is going to be the same as this angle here in our right angle triangle formed by the components. So let's start by drawing a free body diagram for the block on the incline. We're going to take the simplest case. We're going to make this frictionless to start out with. We can always add friction later. The two forces, well, for any object here on Earth, we can always start with a vector straight down equal to the weight. And of course, in this case here, the block is against a surface, so there's going to be that surface force. I like to call it the normal force this way. And as I said before, we're going to break up the weight into components parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. And my preferred method for doing that is to create a little parallelogram. So I've drawn my two directions. Here's the direction perpendicular to the ramp. Here's the direction parallel to the ramp. And what I want to do is create a little parallelogram. So I'm basically taking a vector in this direction and adding it to a vector in this direction to create my parallelogram. And so it, my parallelogram should look like this. I've got right angles here. And of course, this vector here is identical to this vector here. This vector here is identical to this vector here. And as I said before, this angle theta in the ramp has to equal this angle theta right here. That is, this angle increases, this angle increases in the same way. And this angle here would also be theta. Now for my components, I'm interested in this component here. Well, that component is opposite the angle, so it's going to be a sine of theta times the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse was simply that mg. So this component here, it's the component of the weight pushing the block along the incline. It's going to be mg sine theta. And similarly, this side here, well, it's adjacent to theta, so it's going to be a cosine theta, and the hypotenuse is mg. So there are my two components. This component, mg cos theta, it's kind of going to hold the block on the ramp. mg sine theta, that's going to push the block down the ramp. Now if I analyze the two directions, that perpendicular direction, well in the perpendicular direction we know that the block does not lift off the ramp. It also doesn't go into the ramp. So there has to be no net force in that normal direction. And that means that this, the length of that normal vector has to be the same as this component here, mg cos theta. That is, at least in magnitude, n has to be equal to mg cos theta. If I want to analyze what's going on along the ramp, well, I know that we've got acceleration along the ramp, and I can use Newton's second law and apply it to that direction, f net equals ma. 
And my net force is going to be this mg sine theta. Because there's nothing, if there's no friction, there's nothing to cancel that out. There's nothing to oppose that. So that is my net force, mg sine theta. And that has to equal m times a. M's are going to cancel. So this is, at least on our frictionless ramp, this is very much like dropping objects straight down, where it doesn't depend on the mass. And in a sense, we are just kind of dropping r objects, right? We're dropping them down a ramp now instead of straight down. So what we're going to get here is that A will equal G sine theta. So for example, if theta is equal to 30 degrees, we're going to get an acceleration of half of G, or about 4.9 meters per second squared. So if we were to put some friction in, say we've got a little bit of friction here, then of course we'd just have to throw it in to this equation here. We'd have mg sine theta minus f equals mass times acceleration. And that would make the acceleration a little bit less. This particular simulation is coming from Professor Wang at the National Taiwan Normal University. And if you go to this uh, website here, there's lots of great physics simulations. The important things to see in this simulation right now is simply that as you increase the angle of the ramp, of course this mg sine theta, that accelerating component of the weight, it keeps getting larger and larger. And the normal force here, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. Now they've also put some static friction into the system, that's this FST. It gets balanced off by the mg sine theta, so it exactly can cancels out mg sine theta until it reaches its limit and then mg sine theta, that accelerating component down the, down the ramp, it wins out and it begins to slide down the ramp. Now the sliding down the ramp isn't shown in this simulation. Okay, so here's an IB question for you to munch on. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video, try it out, and then come back for the answer. So let's start with the part I here. It's really just a free body diagram. And so we can always start by drawing the weight straight down. So there's our mg. And of course we have a surface, so there'll be a normal force pushing perpendicular to that surface. And we've got a string, so whenever we have a string, we get a tension force always pulling away from the object. So that would be your free body diagram. Now if you've done a decent job of drawing this to scale, then when you add up your three vectors, You'll have the mg coming down, and then the tension will come across, something like that. And then the normal force will go up like so. And if you've done a good job, then you should get the three vectors adding up so they come back to the starting point. So you can see, I've done not too bad of a job of drawing these to the right relative lengths. Okay, so let's move on to part two. In part two, what we need to do is consider the forces that act along the ramp. So we're going to look down the ramp, all the forces down the ramp and up the ramp. And now if we're going to do that, that means we're going to have to take this mg force, the weight, and break it up into components perpendicular to the ramp and along the ramp to create that parallelogram like we've done before. So that should look about like that. This angle theta, of course, appears in your triangles. That angle there is theta, or we could say that angle there likewise is theta. Now if the object is in equilibrium that means all the forces are going to cancel out and what that means in particular is that the length of this vector, this, the size of the tension has to be exactly equal to this component right here. And that component, well it's the same as this here and this side is opposite the angle theta. So this component here is going to be the hypotenuse mg times the sine of theta. This component is mg times the sine of theta. So if we have no net force up and down the ramp, T has to be equal to mg sine theta. And so I can write that down. T is what we're trying to solve for. M we know that's 2.6 kilograms. And G we know is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then the sine of 25 degrees. Notice that the kilograms will cancel out. We'll get units for tension in newtons, which we should, and that comes out to be 10.8 newtons. So let's try to summarize the main points in the video. First thing is, if we're going to consider an incline, we've got to consider our components along the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp. Second thing, the angle of the ramp, that angle theta, has to be the same 
as this angle here. Third thing, the component of the weight, here's the weight, parallel to the incline will be mg sine theta, and the other component right here will be mg cos theta. And it's going to have to balance the normal force, whereas this mg sine theta, it's going to provide the acceleration down the ramp. And then as a last point, friction, or could be tension, will balance off mg sine theta if you've got an equilibrium situation. And that's all for today. Thank you very much.